In 1858, the Mother of God came down from heaven and appeared in Lourdes, France, the outskirts of town, to a little girl named Bernadette Subirous. Miracles began to happen. Extraordinary things began to take place here in the southwest of France. And today, we have a wonderful opportunity to really look at the history of what happened there. And we're inside the archives of the Sanctuary of France, where we're going to be able to ask some really wonderful questions and see some beautiful artifacts that have been treasured here for all of us to share. So Deacon, we're so excited to be here. Yes. Um, we have uh, Nicolas de Jorgen, who's here, the archivist in the sanctuary, and Deacon here from California. We've come to Lourdes together many times, yes. and we're here to, to share this exciting information about the sanctuary and the history of the apparitions. So let's begin with a prayer. Very good. We'll begin our prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, we come to you with hearts filled with gratitude and joy and excitement as we are here in this holy place, the archives and the library of the Sanctuary of Lourdes. Lord, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit to be with us, to open our hearts and our minds, that we will be open to learning more about the treasures contained in this special place that tell the story of St. Bernadette and Our Lady of Lourdes. And to help us with this, we ask for the intercession of our Blessed Mother as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. Our Lady of Lourdes, St. Bernadette, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're so grateful. Thank you, Nicola, to have us return to the archives. And I want to ask, um, the building we're in is very old. How old is this building? We are in the building of the Chaplain House, which has been built after the apparition in 1880, uh, about. And how long have you worked here in the archives? I've been working for 11 years in the archives, and I'm responsible for them since three years. And we're grateful. <laughs> we're grateful to have you and to know that these treasures are guarded here. Um, it's, it's wonderful and exciting things that are here. Um, and these things have been here since the, the beginning of the apparitions and the investigation of the church. The, the church has collected all of these treasures and information. No. At the beginning, the priest brought everything without any specific order or organization. And then it has been uh, organized by Monsignor Théas in, uh, in the building. Uh, I had the privilege to meet uh, Père René Laurentin uh, coming here to Lourdes. And of course, he wrote the beautiful book, Bernadette Speaks. It's volumes here in France, but condensed in the English language. And most people consider it the authority of the apparitions and Bernadette in Lourdes. Do you agree this book is the treasure of the story of Lourdes? Oui, oui. Yes, because he has been looking through all information, all documents, all traces, just to re-fix uh, all the existing situations. We hear the bells, so we know we're very <laughs> near, very near the church here and very close to the grotto where all of these things are stored. And we see you have some treasures to share with us in Deacon. This is your first time in the, in the archives, the archive. It is. I'm very excited to be here. Um, you've been working here for a significant period of time, a service of love, a ministry. What are some of the most significant items you have seen? See, every document, all documents uh, related to what happened at Lourdes is very important. So we have letters from Bernadette, not all the letters, because there's a lot of them in the veils, but mainly the letters written by Bernadette to sisters and brothers. These are the original documents in her hand. Ce sont vraiment les lettres yes, it's letters she wrote herself, and uh, she 
describes uh, everyday events, what happens around her, and uh, all about the life that at the period she was writing. She has some of the best handwriting I've ever seen, Marlene. <laughs> trained, a beautiful by, lady. trained by nuns. <laughs> <laughs> I can see why. It's beautiful. I wonder, are these in French, or are these in the dialect of Bernadette? Oh, All the letters are written in French. So she would speak to her family in her dialect, but in writing the letters, the sisters are teaching her to write in French, not in her dialect. <laughs> Going to school, she, she starts learning to write in French, and anyway, being in the afterwards, which is not in Occitanie, she, she had to speak and develop French capacities. Right. So she speaks a dialect, Bernadette does, not regular French, but she speaks the local dialect of her valley. And Père Paramel and the others in the story of Lourdes, they don't speak the same language as her. Oui, c'est. The, the dialect was spoken uh, all over, but with different. Uh, nuances between valleys and areas, and Bernadette and Perman not being from the same area, they add sometimes uh, different ways of expressing themselves. What languages did the Mother of God speak to Bernadette? So it was in Occitan, the language Bernadette was speaking. She spoke the language Bernadette used to speak. So Bernadette and who we become to know is the Mother of God speak the same language. So what Bernadette is repeating to us is exactly a, a language she knows and she understands. Oui, les mots étaient compréhensibles. The words were accessible to Bernadette, but the meaning of the words was not accessible to her. She didn't understand what the meaning was, but she knew the words. And in that sense, it explained that the message from uh, the Virgin overpassed what Bernadette was being to understand or to translate. So she repeats it as she heard it, even if she doesn't understand. And uh, so it's the exact repeating from her lips to Bernadette's ears, and then she gives it directly to us to hear. Oui, oui, oui. Yes. Oh. In the interviews we know from uh, the authorities here, they try to change the words for Bernadette. I read that in Perrani mm -hmm. um But Bernadette is is she stays true to what she says. Is that in the records? Oui. Le... Yeah, the, the people who were asking Bernadette tried to give wrong messages, but Bernadette never accepted this and always corrected them and came back to the original version. And this is very impressive because she was in front of all the people trying to curve her languages and she had to correct it and come back to what she said for, for a young girl like this. So reading this, I wonder, are they trying to intimidate Bernadette? The... Yes, they tried to intimidate her with a purpose to demonstrate that she was not saying the truth and therefore they could stop the whole story at an early stage. So when you read these records, it's to you apparent, obvious, of what Bernadette's saying and what they were trying to do and all of this is in documents that is here. We can see it just the way as it was. It's still preserved here to see now. We okay, in the archives, we have the written documents of what Bernadette said. So we, we know exactly how she responded to, to whatever comments has been made. Out of these documents, yes. I'm wondering what would be the, the piece of the document? Like what would you, as a deacon and, and studying the church, what would be the most significant um, that you document here that 
is so telling. Je pense que c'est les Okay, it's the, the police questionings which demonstrate the, the envy to transform the situation and prove that Bernadette stays 100% faithful to herself in what she said. Especially if we keep in mind she was a very young girl, 14, in front of responsible people having some personality and trying to make her divide from the, her own version. This is one of the uh, parts of the story that amazed me, the, the intense scrutiny she was under, yet she maintained the truth. I would be interested to see the record of those who were trying to persuade her otherwise. Does the archive have any um, documentation of Monsieur Jacomet or perhaps the inspectors or those who are questioning her? What you have here is handwritten notes of Jacomet <laughs> all along the, the questioning session, but it's not a, a faithful, detailed, word by word uh, expression. And this is a proof that Bernadette was having some, something in herself which helped her not to, to fade in front of the, those people trying to change the version. Are all of the documents of the four-year investigation of the church into the apparitions, because the, the bishop um, requests that the, there be an investigation into all of the apparitions, to everything that takes place, are all of those records here in the archive? Uh, partly, but we still have a lot of documentation and documents uh, leading to the official recognition. You know, Marlene, we've been in the presence of, of a, a really important document here, but there's something else that kind of speaks for itself that's been on this table since we began, and I've been excited to ask about it. Uh, we have a very uh, um, beautiful stone on our table today. Could you please share with us what, a little bit about this remarkable uh, artifact that we have with us? This stone is the specific stone on which the Virgin had put her feet. And it has been taken off at the moment when the inscription has been fixed on the rock below the statue. The exact date, I don't know, but it should be in the years 20 when the The statue has been reorganized and refreshed. And why did they remove the piece of where she stood? Why? Just to, to be able to fix on, on the stone the, the inscription in Bigourdan, I am the Immaculate Conception. Marlene, I think this is as close as if I ever come to heaven. <laughs> if, uh, this is the stone where the feet of the Mother of God stood. Uh, one might say it's the touchstone from heaven to earth. Exactly, that's the place where earth and uh, the sky are really. Would it be okay if we touched? May, may we? <laughs> if I may be so bold. <laughs> you you we can, first. Barley. We can pray for everyone who, who would like to be touching this great piece of um, heaven. Yes. Well, let's do that as we uh, draw closer to it. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing upon us and those whom we represent from the United States, for all those who would desire desperately to touch this stone where Our Lady's feet stood. We ask that you bless us all in this moment as we touch the feet, the stone that the feet of our mother stood. Amen. May I draw closer to you? Be careful. Does it fit in your pocket? <laughs> <laughs> I might try. It's so beautiful. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. I'm so grateful that the church preserves the treasures for us. It's a great, you know, great witness for us. So thank you for sharing this. Uh, treasure. I can see you have some other treasures you've chosen to share with us today. C'est un gant de Saint Bernadette. This is a glove of Saint Bernadette. Her hands are so <laughs> tiny. Et voilà la taille. Euh, yes. Qui est assez ses initiales, le B et le S. Ah. You have the initials on it, B and S. Bernadette, she goes. It's very cold in the Pyrenees. 
I know, I'm from Los Angeles. I'm very cold. Um, she would wear this uh, on a special occasion or every day? Pyrenees, normally people do not wear gloves every day, so it should be gloves from special occasions. Ah, I see. Wow. <laughs> just to compare the size, it's just a... Maybe. It may be so bold to, to put our hand inside. Uh, no, I can't, I can't uh, come that close. That's beautiful. So this would be a relic. This would be a uh, second class relic. Oui, je pense. Pense, oui. Yes. Uh, we are blessed to be in the presence of such wonderful yeah. uh, treasures of the church. You know, it shows Bernadette's a real person. She's a regular person. She's obviously very petite, a French girl, but uh, the Mother of God stood here. This is Bernadette was there. So it's wonderful that we have these real tangible pieces of the history and that they're preserved here. It shows it's a real uh, meeting of two people with the two pieces here. Yes. These items help tell a story for, for, human, for human beings. We get to see, to touch, to feel uh, this close to saints and, and the mother of God. Um, is this the purpose of the archives, to preserve these items in order to, to tell the story? We yes, this brings the proof of the existence of the story and allows the people, whether they are historian or other people, to describe and tell what happens there. Out of all of the things, the treasures here, is there just one thing when you first came here that's to you personally the most significant um, if you had to choose one thing? Uh, all the archives are very important and helps to understand better the story, but if there is one, it would be the rock, which is the demonstration, the proof, where the, the Virgin put her feet on land. Yeah, I would have to say. I, I agree, I agree. I, just one more question, I, <laughs> I have to ask this. Um, these items are such treasures, but they're kept in this place that I didn't know existed. Do they ever come outside of the building and shared with the general public, um, special occasion? Or will, the, will the general public ever get the wonderful privilege we are experiencing right now to come this close? Uh, for the moment, very few people can see them, but there is a project which would lead to create an exposition room to allow the pil pilgrims to go and share mm -hmm. all what we are vi vi seeing today and now. That's very exciting. It's like um, we're taking that light of Christ and taking off the bushel basket, and we're going to put it on a lampstand so that the whole world can see. It's very exciting. But, you know, another thing that we see often here in Europe, and I, I don't see as much in the United States, is ex-photos. Um, there are so many here. Could you tell us what is an ex-photo and why are so many here in Lourdes? An ex-photo demonstrates that a, a request made by someone mm -hmm. has been granted and uh, that today the grace is flowing or has been flowing throughout the, the city of Lourdes between the people who asked and those who received. So if a prayer is requested to, I see many of them, uh, some of them that are displayed today in the archives are, um, or maybe to be preserved or recorded, are military medals, for example. So would they be in Thanksgiving for the safety in the war, or I see others are gifts of people. Uh, they always say thank you to the mother of God, or uh, so it's a, a gift in Thanksgiving for a, a gift received, a heavenly gift. Uh, there is, a, it's both, it's, a, but you have ex voto for war situation, you have ex voto for gift to see, but you have also in, in, the, in the Basilica here an ex voto for the children which having to face a tiger has not been eaten and uh, the Virgin is uh, sent. And you have also an exoto for the first uh, flights uh, between uh, Europe and America. <laughs> Marlene, you mentioned uh, gifts and Thanksgiving. I think you might have a gift to give <laughs> our archivist. 
Yes, we want to present you. The just received today um, the book in French, and this is uh, 20 extraordinary experiences um, that have, we have privileged to witness the stories of these people. So we have it for you in French and in English. We were asked to present for the archives here the record of um, just the, I guess, the unofficial miracles, but still miraculous to many uh, who experienced them. So we're happy to give you more treasures, <laughs> we hope. <laughs> we see. This could be a type of ex voto to express the thanks for all the graces received in Lourdes by those people. In fact, the people in the book, um, they're humble people that uh, had an extraordinary experience, but each of them said, um, it's such a great grace, they can't deny it. And they have to share it in case someone needs to know it's possible. And this is also the, um, the library of, of the sanctuary is here. Do you receive books that are written about lords and in addition to the archives, there is a library here, which receives everything uh, that comes in. Uh, and normally, they provide uh, some, uh, some examples of what they receive to the archives. Well, we're grateful to have, to have something here. And um, we're so grateful for your time. We know there's other treasures um, for us to see, but we're so grateful for what you've shared with us today and that you have such care for them. and preserve them for the next generation so that they will know um, the message of Lords and they'll have some proof for those who maybe have a question they can be answered so thank you for your time and you know maybe we can pray for all of the people who have a question that they want answered and for all those um, who want the privilege to visit the archives and and be a witness to the actual documentation that about the apparitions we can pray for people who have questions and Pray for those who want to make the journey to NC. I love it. We'll take that intention into our prayer as we conclude our time together. We conclude our time in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we conclude our time together today with hearts overflowing with joy and gratitude for the preservation of these treasures of the church in this holy place, treasures of St. Bernadette and our Blessed Mother. We're grateful to you, Lord, for the gift of your son, your servant, Nicola, and his colleagues. We ask that you bless them and the very good and important work they do for all of your people from all over the world. For all of this gratitude and in thanksgiving, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us remain in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Nicola. Will you lead us in a song?